Hey everyone, Down Under. Welcome to Reef Keeping 101. Sorry I can't join you for the weekend, but what I would like to do is talk to you about Dr. Tim's Aquatics and our flagship product, One and Only. I'm Dr. Tim, founder, chairman, CEO of Dr. Tim's Aquatics, and this is our one and only live nitrifying bacteria. And when you first set up a tank and start talking about nitrifying bacteria, there are a lot of myths out there, and I've busted most of them. So, what's different about our bacteria? First, they are 100% natural. They're isolated from our aquariums and our ponds. Secondly, they're concentrated. Instead of just having a few bugs, because it's all a numbers game, we give you a lot of bacteria, both the ammonia oxidizers and the nitrite oxidizers, so they can start working very quickly. And third, and this is very important, we grow them on a substrate. So I've been shaking this bottle while talking, and that's what the nitrifying bacteria in one and only are going to look like. And I'm going to put it down for a few minutes. And what you're going to see is that it starts to settle because of the substrate that we grow them on. The bacteria like to stick to something, and as you'll see, that's very important. When they're in the bottle and they're on that substrate, they're in hibernation, because a lot of people will say, oh, how can you have bacteria in a bottle? They have to be fed, they can't breathe. Well, that's a myth. Bacteria don't have lungs, so they don't need to breathe. They only need oxygen when they're converting ammonia and nitrite. And they're only doing that once they're in the aquarium. In the bottle, they're just sitting there. Secondly, they don't need food three times a day. Again, they're not human, so they don't need breakfast, lunch, and dinner, a snack, a beer, or anything like that. They only need that to divide. And since we don't want them to divide in the bottle, we don't give them any food, and they do quite well. They can last up to a year or longer. They're like a rechargeable battery. They're in the bottle very strong and they slowly start to lose their charge, but they can last quite a long time before you put them in your aquarium. Now talking about surface, and look, look at that, in just the few minutes that I've been talking, you can see how quickly that settles out. And that's what I want to talk about, because once you've set up your aquarium, a lot of people, they want to do a quarantine tank or they want to do bare bottom. There's not much surface here for the bacteria to stick on. It's not really very good for them. So say you add some um, rock. It can be real reef rock. That's really good stuff. What, whatever you have, I'm just using this as an example. Again, that's not a lot of surface area for the bacteria. So what I suggest in all aquariums is you add some substrate. Pour some media in there. That makes the bottom rough. How thick? A eh, couple of centimeters is fine. Two or three centimeters. Smooth it out. And what happens when you pour the bacteria in there? They will get down and they'll start sticking to this coral. If you don't have anything in the bottom, the water flow just takes it into the overflow traps it into the mechanical filter. When you throw the mechanical filter away, you're throwing all your bacteria away. The next point is after you get the tank set up running well, get the temperature dialed in, maybe you've got filter socks. Now, filter socks are great for keeping your water clean, but when you're first setting up and using our nitrifiers, they keep it too clean because the nitrifying bacteria on one and only can get stuck in here and then when you clean the sock you throw them away. So take out your filter socks, turn off your UV, turn off your skimmer, turn off your ozonator if you have that, all for 48 hours after you've added the one and only. Right? Now once that's in there it starts it'll be a little cloudy but then it'll clear up. In order to really do a good job and know what you're doing with cycling you need to have test kits. Any brand will work. I suggest you have ammonia for sure and nitrite. Now realize these are indicators. They're not analytical instruments people will measure down to three parts past the decimal point. No. Presence, absence. Dark green for ammonia, dark purple for nitrite. 
And that brings up another point. You want to keep the ammonia and the nitrite below 5 milligrams per liter. If you're doing a fishless cycling with our ammonium chloride, you need to use test kits so you make sure you don't add too much. If you add too much, that actually slows the bacteria down. So it's better to add the ammonia a couple times a, a week, a very small amount. Just don't pour it in there. More is not better with the ammonia. The tank will cycle better. And again, if the nitrite or the ammonia is above 5 milligrams per liter, don't add more. And I know that's a lot to comprehend, and I only have a couple of minutes here. But what we do have is these guides. There's a guide to fishless cycling with ammonium chloride. There's a guide to coloring up your corals, a guide to getting rid of cyanobacteria. It also works for algae and dinoflagellates. And on the back here, it gives you step-by-step, day-by-day directions of how to proceed with our products. And the main thing in a reef tank and basically all aquariums is have some patience. Nothing good happens quick. So when you're first setting out, step back, Analyze the situation, don't panic, and just maybe talk to some friends, some Facebook, email us questions, but slower is better. I know you want to get set up, I know you want that gorgeous tank that maybe your mate has, but I'm sure he didn't get it in just a week or two. You've got to have a little patience, give the system a little time, and yeah, you're going to make some mistakes. We all did. We still do make mistakes, just new ones hopefully, and we can all learn by talking to each other. Okay? Now the one thing about the nitrifying bacteria is because it's on a surface, when you do, do a big cleaning, say you clean the back of the tank, you siphon clean, you rearrange things, well you should put some more in. Helps rebalance the system, recharge the system. After medicating, now hopefully you don't have to medicate your display tank, you've got a quarantine tank, and that brings up another thing. If you're doing a quarantine tank, a lot of times you'll be putting copper or something in there and you don't want to use a coral substrate. So use some type of an inert material. I like to use something like a glass beads or marbles or something like that. Again, it provides surface for the one and only bacteria to adhere to and get stuck on, but you can easily remove them and they won't interfere with your medications that you're doing during the quarantine period. All right? Now, you can always email us at info at Dr. Tim's Aquatics. We'd love to hear from you. Sorry I can't join you this weekend, but have a great time and maybe a beer for me. Hey, thanks everyone.